Hello and welcome everyone. This is Mr. Sovar with another computer craft tutorial. This I have well basically I've taken a huge break from it. Um a lot better than my other tutorials, I can tell you that. If you've seen my previous tutorials, I was a little bit less experienced and really have everything up to par. Okay, I'm gonna change some graphic stuff because as usual okay, yeah, I know. I said I was up to par on everything, and I forgot about the graphics. Oh, boy. Anyways. Um. So, yeah, I guess this is how it's going to be. Okay. Um, so what we have here is a monitor. Okay. That is probably a little too much. Okay, so what we have here is a monitor, a computer, and also a disk drive. We're not using the disk drives right now, but, um we are using the RedNet. Um, I would prefer you to go to my previous videos to uh, have a little bit more experience of RedNet and uh, Lua programming. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of this stuff. I think it's like silver wood or something because there's taint over there. I don't want taint get into my main base. But anyways, um, as you can see here, you have a kind of a control pad of some sort. Um, Basically, well, what I got working here is you can walk over each uh, pressure plate and you can print forward, right, left, backwards. That would be back, that would be forward, that would be right, and that would be left. Now, I'm going to uh, explain briefly how this programming works. We first of all go to the hub computer and we can do control T, which for one of the people I've seen my previous videos told me about that, which thank you, of course. But uh, we go to edit, start, which is the program. Uh, what we have here is the rednet.open top. This initializes the rednet. You need to place the rednet uh, wireless module on one of the sides of the computer. I put it on the top, so I did in parentheses top for the word to place the red net. Um, this is a loop. It's an inf infinite loop, actually, unless you do control T or control R, but since it's a startup program, it'll just keep on doing it, so you need to do control T. We have a slight delay here. Now, you need the delay when you're doing a loop or else chaotic things happen and just kind of shuts down on you on like the 10th time it went through the loop or something like that. So make sure you include the uh, delay part of the loop. The ID comma message equals rednet that receive receives the ID number of which the message came from. Like uh, for example, each computer in Computercraft has an ID number. Uh, if computer one sends something, computer two sends something, they're the exact same message. You would then use the ID variable, which is an integer to determine which computer came from, so therefore you don't get the messages mixed up. And of course the message is whatever you send out into the RedNet world, or network. Now the if is a statement where it's sort of a bit like, if this is true, then this happens type of thing. Of course I'm kind of really going quick through this stuff because I'm assuming that you know some knowledge of Lua. <coughs> Excuse me. And what we have here is if message is equal to forward, uh, then print forward end. Now you need the end to close the if statement, and you need then to start out the if statement. So whatever you put in between then and end will happen if this is true. Now as you can see, the equal signs are a little different. The single equal sign is assigning something. The double equal sign is for checking something. The double equal signs represent, okay, is it equal or not? If it's equal, return true. If it's not equal to, then do false. And whenever there's a false, this program, or I'm sorry, code print forward does not get executed at all. And the same thing for left, right, and back. Now, this is a very, very simple program, and throughout these tutorials, I'm going to expand this idea, make it so that turtles work together. I'm going to be introducing stuff like HTTP, OS, the math, the GPS, 
uh, functions, all sorts of cool stuff. And this is just the basics, just kind of, this is like a little introduction type of thing to what I'm going to be doing. And hopefully you guys like it. And of course, before we leave, um, well, I guess I might as well go through this. You can do control, save, or exit. I will be doing exit because, well, don't need to. And I also have another thing. Um, I created a program as you, well, the program you just saw was called save or start. I'm sorry, start. This program is called startup. When you make a startup program, if you leave the game, of course, you save the chunks and all that. And you go back to the game. The startup program automatically starts up even when you are not even near the computer or even touches the computer. Um, okay, my dog's act up. Quit, quit it. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so the startup program uh, basically executes the save program, but using a shell command that allows it to have some arguments, which uh, I don't know if they're arguments or parameters. I think they're parameters to actually allow the program to run on the monitor and not on the computer. And I'm going to show you that how it works right now. The shell dot run, and you have I think they're arguments. I can't remember arguments. I think um, we have monitor left start. Monitor indicates that you want to run a program on the monitor. The left is on which side is the monitor comparison to the computer. And start is the program you want to start up. Now there's also another program which I'm not going to come cover that allows you to do uh, ASCII Star Wars type of stuff, where it's all characters and stuff like that. Um, I think I've done a video on that a while ago, a long time ago. Uh, just check in my channel, I might have it. But anyways, moving on. Uh, again, do the control, exit. Let's do startup. It even says running start on left monitor. Now, <clears throat> If you actually do these, do this programming and you run into like errors or something like that, it'll tell you on the screen, it'll tell you which line on the code has the error and stuff like that. It's really nice how it works out. What the heck am I stuck? Okay. I am going to open up one of these areas and go onto the computer and show you how these things work. So I'm going to do control T to get out of the program and then I'm going to do edit startup. Now the edit startup command doesn't just allow you to edit a file, it also creates a file. So there's no like create command or anything like that. But right here it's sort of similar. You got the rednet.open left, the infinite loop, the delay so it doesn't like freak out. But right here we have an if statement, but we have redstone.get input top comma true. Now what this <clears throat> function does is that it checks if there is redstone on top of the computer that is on. That indicates the true. Now if it's false, it's looking for is there a place that has no redstone on. If it's true, then it's looking for redstone that's on. Okay, let me just say that one more time. It sounded a little weird. Um, the git input, if there's a true here, that means it'll look for redstone that's on. And if there's a false here, it'll, it'll check for redstone that's off. And of course, this indicates which side of the computer is checking for. In this case, it's top because there's a pressure plate, a block, than the actual computer itself, which transfers redstone through the block to the computer. Of course, we have the then, and then we have rednet.broadcast right. Now, when broadcasting, you only send like a piece of information, basically. The ID is automatically sent through the rednet network to the receiver if you need it. Now the actual message, the message variable that we had on the other computer, this is what it would be. Right, forward, left, back, and that's why we had those if statements saying if message equals right, left, or whatever, then print right, left, or whatever on the screen. And that is how that works. It's like a communication system. It's great for uh, building video games within Minecraft Technic. Um, I'm going to expand on this, of course, as I just said. I'm going to work with a lot of turtles. I'm going to be doing all sorts of cool stuff. 
And it'll be like a mini series. It won't be too big, but it'll be probably four to five videos. And uh, I hope you guys like this. Um, it's a really simple program. You can try it out yourself. Uh, if you have any problems or anything, comment on the video. If you have any suggestions that you want to know, make sure to comment on the video. Also, share it with your friends. Uh, give my <clears throat> video a like so more people can see and learn about computer craft. And also, make sure to subscribe to support me. I really, really appreciate my subscribers and my viewers and everyone that likes my videos. Even people that don't. It really gives me some uh, ideas on what I should do and shouldn't do. And as you may know, some of you <coughs> excuse me, might know of my older computer craft video, which tends to be my most popular video on my channel. But I misspelled forward and it created big dis... Butte, I think. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't really care, to be truthful. It's cool and all, but I, I don't know. I just thought it was kind of crazy. But anyways, thank you for watching my video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. This is Mr. Sovar, and have a peaceful and wonderful day. See ya.